Good morning, you wood-wielding weekend warriors. Today we're going to talk about pocket holes. I like pocket holes. I like pocket holes so much I can't believe we're not pocket holing right now. But there are many ways to pocket hole. You can make your own pocket hole jig. You can buy a Craig jig like I have here. This is the K4. You can buy the newest one that come out. It's got like an auto adjusting clamp feature on the front, which is pretty nice. You could buy a great big Craig jig. You could buy industrial pocket hole machines. Those can go anywhere up to $3,000. This particular one I got right before the K5 come out or no, right after the K5 come out. The K5 had the plastic sleeves along the side, the little wings like, and uh, I didn't feel like those were very sturdy. I didn't feel I needed to pay an extra 50 bucks or so for some plastic wings. Now, they have the Craig jigs like this, the K4s you can get for under 100 bucks. These little ones like this, you can get for 30, 40 bucks used. Maybe less used if you find them in the right spot. Uh, I still use this one. It uh, gets me into some tight spots every now and then. Uh, very seldomly do I ever need that one anymore. I bought that one when I first started out. And uh, honestly, I didn't like using that one. It just seemed too time consuming. But once I got the K4 and I built this platform for it to go in, man, it... I love it and I feel absolutely no need to run out and buy the fanciest Craig jig on the market now. This one serves its purpose just fine for me. All I done was take some pallet boards, glued them together in a butcher block style and uh, I've done the same for the bottom. It's a little scratched up. It gets moved around quite a bit make some pretty nice little drawers for some storage they pull out I got some screws extra bits always got to have some extra bits I got some extra accessories in here for the K4 I'm not even sure what half this crap does but I got it um, so I'm gonna go ahead and set up a couple of pieces in here and we'll show you how this works all right, for demonstration purposes, I have clamped this one inch piece of white oak into my Craig jig. This piece of white oak is nine feet long and it's not going anywhere. I could pocket haul this thing all day long. And I know what you're saying, of course. You got it balanced right in the center. Of course, it's not gonna go nowhere. But how are you gonna drill the ends? Well, I keep a block that's roughly the same size as my setup here. I will move the Craig jig to the side, place a block in here, and then I can unclamp it, and I can slide this board all the way to the edge, clamp it up, and the board still not going anywhere. And same with the other side. I can unclamp it, slide my crank jig to the other side, slide my board to the other side, block. And now we can clamp down and hold the other side. Not going anywhere. Now, I don't know about the industrial machines, but I feel like if you don't have the mobility to be able to do a nine foot board and pocket hole it, it's not really worth the money. I mean, I'm sure it's worth the money, but you're not going to use a nine foot board on it without using two people. I'm the only guy here and I could have just pocket hold this whole board. So take that into consideration when you're buying a pocket hole jig or building a pocket hole jig. Now, my pocket hole jig normally sits right here, right beside the miter saw, right above the shop vac. 
So, if I'm using the miter saw, I will take my crank jig and push it back up against the wall. Leaving me plenty of room away from my miter fence. When I use it, I will pull it forward on this bench so that I can put my shot back on there like so. Get the clamp ready, put the board in, lock it down, pocket hole. So, as my pocket hole jig sits on this bench by itself most of the time, I keep my most used drill bits. It's a 1 inch and a 7 8 or 3 quarter. I usually use 3 quarter a lot. The 1 inch, not so much. But, they're both sitting right there ready for me to use whenever I decide to use the 1 inch or 3 quarter bits. You gotta turn the shot back on. That's what I just did with that little remote. I have several outlets wired to that remote five five i believe and uh i could turn on my shop vacs i could turn on my fans you know stuff like that now with this dust extraction that comes i can't remember if it comes with the k4 or if i bought it separate but it works really well when drilling boards i mean the mess is almost nothing and it's pretty good i Definitely suggest getting it because it makes a mess if you don't get it. So you see how clean my jig is with the dust extractor. We're going to go ahead and shut that off. And uh, I think we're going to pull it off. I'm going to show you all what it looks like without the dust extraction. It can be pretty messy. And it just pops off. You pinch it on both sides. We'll set it off to the side there. We'll go ahead and uh, get this board moved over. For some reason, I'm moving particularly slow. There's the pocket holes. It cleans the holes out real well, too. That's another plus for the dust extraction. You don't have to beat them out of there. So now we're going to go ahead and drill with the shop vac off of it. Or not. Oh, yeah, I wanted to show y'all I wasn't using a dust extractor. So, here we go. We drill one hole. Now, when you're drilling these holes, it's best to kind of not try to plunge it all in one shot. They'll get jammed up in there. Especially without a dust extractor, you got to kind of pull the chip out. I probably could have just done one hole to show you this, but... I kind of wanted to show you all the mess. We'll go ahead and speed through the other two holes. But if you keep your eye on it, you can uh, see all the chip flying everywhere. It's getting all over the front of my jig. Yeah, it's a freaking mess. I suggest putting, spending the money and getting the adapter for the shop vac. It makes a... Uh, mess when you don't use an adapter for the shop vac. So in case y'all have never used this little one, I'll give you a quick tutorial on that. On the bottom you have these arrows. You set that on the thickness of your material. This material is roughly about 7 8 So we'll go ahead and set that there. And then you put these edges right on the edge of the board, like so. You want to clamp your board down. Craig makes a fine array of clamps for this kind of thing. And then you want to clamp down your Craig jig. I was cutting some pocket holes and some pretty big ones with this, I guess. I gotta screw this one way in. Either that or I was pocket hole at night again and didn't see what I was doing. But anyway, you clamp that down. Now, I don't think they make a dust extractor for this, 
So here we go. Now, if you noticed, the Craig jig moved on me. I don't know if it's because I didn't have it clamped tight enough or not, but it's one of the reasons I don't particularly like this small one. It's okay. It still does a good enough job. It does make a mess. But I prefer my jig better. It just, it just works. So, uh, whether you use the little jig or build your own, pocket holes are the way to go. Now you don't need all these fancy clamps to pocket hole, but it sure does save your thumb. And uh, if you can hold it down with a clamp, it's definitely better. We're gonna take some uh, one inch pocket hole screws, Craig style. Make sure you set your clutch when doing pocket holes because you may very well strip them out, especially in this soft pine. So after getting them three screws put in there, I realized this board's got a couple of cracks in it. So let's see what happens when we hit it with a hammer. Heh, <laughs> pocket hole still intact. <laughs> awesome. Throw that in the scrap pile. So that's how I pocket hole. I like to pocket hole in the morning, pocket hole at night. Little in the afternoon. I pocket hole anytime my wife will let me. Or if the kids leave. But uh that's how I do it. You may not do it that way, and that's fine. Uh that's all I've got for you today. So uh I'm glad we got this done. You can get out there in your wood shop and do it too. Alright, see y'all next time.